Hi, I'm Kathy Kiley with the Sunlight Foundation. I'm joined here by Joshua Hatch, Amy Nye, Anu Naran Swamy, and Liz Bartolomeo, and we're here to tell you about Political Ad Sleuth. Um, this is a tool that I'm really excited about. Uh, I've been a political reporter for about 30 years, uh, actually a few more than that, but who's counting? And um, I think that this is one of the things th uh, that I've worked on that I'm uh, most excited about because I think this is going to enable us to uh, track some of the committees um, and find out who's behind some of the committees who have been most um, uh, behind the the wall uh, in terms of being able to uh, us being able to follow the money so we're going to walk you through uh, a little bit about uh, how this site works what we're trying to do and the other reason that I'm excited about this is as we move into this brave new world of uh, digital journalism I think that and and a world that's really disrupted journalism I think this provides us with a terrific opportunity for a crowdsourced project because as you'll hear from our presenters there is no way that we can really make this site what it can possibly end up being as a, a tool for transparency without the help of journalists and citizens uh, from all over this country. So this is a big lift, uh, but I think it, it's a very worthwhile project and it's worth all the work that we here at Sunlight and our partners at the Free Press have put into it so far and the work that we hope uh, you'll help us put into it going forward. So I'm going to turn this over to my colleague uh, Josh Hatch, who was the person who really came up with this idea and can walk you through the site. And then we'll come back. Uh, uh, several of my colleagues and myself will show you how we've started to use the site, and then we'll open it up for questions. So thanks again for joining us. We're here to talk about Political Ad Sleuth. And first, a little background on the project. The, um, it's possible because of a FCC rule that I'm not going to make you all read, but the, uh, the gist of it is that um, requests for advertising time by candidates and people uh, uh, wanting to advertise on various issues uh, on, on broadcast, radio, and television, <clears throat> the FCC requires that stations uh, record those ad requests and purchases, uh, and until recently has required them to uh, keep these requests at the station houses doesn't say how uh, how quickly they have to file it, but they say within a reasonable and uh, quick amount of time. Uh, usually these files show up uh, within a day or two. Um, have to show when the advertising actually airs, uh, how much the advertising costs, um, things like that. This has been the rule for a while, and you might ask, well, why is this information useful? And it's because you can see how much campaigns are spending in various markets and states. Uh, especially on the national level, that's something you don't see during general elections. So, for example, we can look and see how much Barack Obama and Mitt Romney are spending on various aspects of their campaigns, but not where they're spending their money. And this, a lot, this is a way to see where that money is being spent. Also, during some periods, uh, outside of certain windows, um, 30 days before a, a primary election, 60 days before a general election, uh, outside of those windows, independent expenditure committees, uh, that is somebody uh, advertising to say, uh, uh, call your congressman and tell them uh, we need to drill more uh, uh, for more oil. Um, outside of those windows, those uh, um, ex uh, expenditures don't have to re be reported uh, to the FEC. But the FCC still requires that uh, that information is recorded at the TV station. So it's a way to see uh, who's spending money outside of those small windows before an election. Now, there are two major problems with this uh, from a sort of reporting standpoint. First, and there's a caveat to this, the records of, are kept at each station's broadcast house. Um, so you can imagine there are uh, however many, a thousand or so TV stations around the country. And if you want to get this information, you would need to go to, to all of them. Uh, the second problem here is that the records are kept on paper in filing cabinets as if it were the 1940s. Um, and that's not uh, particularly useful in a modern digital, digital age. In fact, those files look something like this. So you can see here, this is what uh, one of those files looks like. And I'll go into a little more detail on this in a moment. Um, I should point out that there's no standard for this form. 
Um, this information has to be there, but how it's organized varies from station to station. Now there are uh, companies that make the software that stations use to record this information. So how do we solve this? Well, several ways. Uh, first is that uh, in conjunction with Free Press, uh, volunteers are visiting stations and scanning these files. Uh, and then they're taking these files, uploading it to our new website we're showing you today, and taking the data in those files and entering that into our database. And that will allow people to um, extract information from these, aggregate files together, look across markets or advertisers. Um, and so this is what uh, Political Ad Sleuth seeks to uh, fix. Now I should say, uh, the FCC um, quite uh, to our, our, our happiness, I suppose, um, has slightly changed the rules this summer. Um, and now the uh, top four stations, actually it's, it's actually the uh, stations of the four major networks, NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox, uh, stations of those four networks in the top 50 markets have to post uh, these files online. Uh, and that rule went into effect beginning, beginning August 2nd, uh, 2012. What that means is, is that any files created August 2nd and after within those uh, stations um, uh, get posted online. Any file before August 2nd does not have to be posted online. And any station not covered under this rule does not have to post their files online. And that's an important thing because there are a lot of markets that are uh, very interesting electorally that are not covered by this. Uh, briefly, um, uh, you can imagine the top two markets are New York and LA and on the national level anyway, those are not, uh, those are not areas where the uh, Obama and Romney campaigns are, are competing uh, nearly as much as say uh, Norfolk or uh, Columbus um, or Dayton or Toledo. Uh, so a lot of stations that are very important to us uh, are not covered by this rule. Uh, I will say that the uh, beginning in um, 2014, this rule is supposed to apply to all stations. So there is a, it's sort of like the uh, Medicare donut hole. Um, if you're too small, you don't qualify. Um, but beginning 2014, uh, all stations are covered. Unfortunately, uh, all of the files that are being uploaded are PDFs. Um, and that's uh, uh, not terrific because it makes it hard to mine those files uh, for machine readable organized data. So that's where uh, political ad sleuth comes in. Um, it's designed to do several things. One is uh, it organizes efforts to visit the stations, uh, the stations not covered by this rule or not yet covered, uh, in order for volunteers to pull these files, scan them and upload. Uh, the upload uh, uh, function of the site allows for volunteers to, to put those files online. It also copies uh, the files that are hosted by the FCC. Uh, so all of the stations that are covered, uh, Political Ad Sleuth has their files as well. And we have a data entry system so we can, uh, through volunteer efforts, turn those PDFs into actual usable data. We're going to go into more detail in a moment, but very quickly, uh, this is what uh, Political Ad Sleuth, some of the screenshots from Political Ad Sleuth. Um, so you can see here, you can submit a political file. Here, you can enter some of the uh, uh, essential data, uh, which is to say, who's the advertiser? How much are they spending? How many ads? Um, you know, uh, during what period are the ads going to run? And then there's additional data about each spot, which I'll go into a little bit later. So let me just quickly um, show you, again, one of these files. OK, so this is what the, the site looks like uh, at its core. Um, and that's politicaladsleuth.com, for those of you who are following along. I noticed uh, some people don't know how to spell sleuth, so make sure your, your grade school spelling skills work. <laughs> All right, so at the top here, you'll see that there are, sorry, there's quite a lag here. Um, there are some reports here, uh, which I'll go into in a little more detail in a moment, uh, telling you um, 
markets of the last seven days, the newest ads, looking up by state, uh, how you can sign up and log in. First one I'm gonna show you is stuff that you can do without having to log in. Um, logging in allows you to contribute to the project, but you can simply browse the information that we have without logging in. Uh, the first is if you, uh, you can sign up to uh, be, to learn more about uh, some of the files through our friends at uh, Free Press. Uh, that's what this take action area is here. But on the right, you'll see here are some recently uploaded documents. So let's click on this one here. We'll see this is, um, it says federal president, Barack Obama, Obama for America, um, and then uh, uh, some other information, uh, October 9th, 2012 on WTVJ, uh, Miami, Florida. So if we click on that, we'll get a little bit of information here. Um, and if we scroll down, so this is a file that was recently uploaded to the FCC and um, you can just click on it to see the original document over on the FCC site. But let's, let's start up here with seven day market report. So here you can see political ad filings from the last seven days by TV market. And what this gives you an indication of is the markets where there's the most activity in the advertising, political advertising space. So <coughs> the top one, you see Las Vegas, of the nine stations that serve Las Vegas, four are covered by the FCC mandate. There have been 142 uh, non-candidate issue ads. Those would be by groups like Crossroads GPS or Priorities USA, America, or Priorities Action USA. Um, you can see there have been 78 presidential ads, so that would be by the Romney and Obama campaigns, 100 Senate ads, or ad buys, I should say. Um, and that, that would be, uh, uh, who is it, Heller and? And uh, uh, I'm blanking on her name. Somebody help me. Uh, uh, the Congresswoman, Shelley Berkeley. There you go. Uh, as well as 45 uh, ads for um, uh, congressional races. And if I can just interrupt, um, what <clears throat> those numbers represent are um, not necessarily purchases of ads themselves, but activity. Um, by the uh, advertiser. So when you drill down and actually look into the documents, you will find that uh, some of these are ad purchases, some of them are uh, files, very interesting files, which will show you that you can get the names of uh, the principals behind some of these committees. And the other thing that you'll find is um, some revisions of advertising. So this is something, uh, it's a work in progress. We're really happy to get feedback on this site, and I'm sure you'll notice some uh, some quirks as I did when I started to look through the files, and I found that not all of the documents that we're seeing are actual new purchases, but they are revisions of previous purchases. So be careful about, you can't just add all these numbers together and say, this is how much money was spent, or this is how much money was, uh, or how many ads were purchased. What this really tells you though, this gives you an indication of the intensity of political activity uh, on a, in a particular market. And I think you'll all agree, knowing what we know about these markets, that uh, there's a lot going on uh, in Nevada and Michigan. And, and as you can see in Nevada, it's because there's a conflation. You've got a, a it's a presidential battleground state. It's a Senate. Uh, they've got one of the marquee Senate races and they've got a, a very competitive house race there. So uh, what you're really seeing is almost like a weather forecast here. You're seeing the political fronts move across the country and this is telling you where the activity, the buying and selling and revising of ad schedules is most intense. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Josh. Thanks, while, while Kathy was talking, we got solved a uh, technical glitch. So if you can forgive me for this, I'm going to, um, hopefully this will work. I'm going to take one step back. Okay, good. And look at um, one of our look at one of these files. So forgive me for jumping around a little bit and sort of dealing with a technical problem, but I think we got resolved. So if we look at one of these one of these files, you'll notice on this file um, these files have what's called a, a contract number, and this is a way of tracking um, a, an original 
uh, contract and then revisions that might happen to that contract. So it's not, it's not uncommon for an advertiser to say, I wanna buy uh, 100 ads in October and then come back later, maybe when they realize that uh, a, you know, they're, they're so far behind in the polls, they don't wanna spend their money there and, or they're so far ahead or, or whatever the case may be and they wanna revise it. And this is a way of tracking uh, contracts. So there's a contract revision number <clears throat> there are what are called flight dates, and that's the time period the ads are scheduled to run. Um, so they might say, uh, you might make an ad buy in August for advertising in October because you want to make sure to reserve your spots uh, now. And, uh, and in fact, in this case, uh, this contract was actually bought in uh, September 21st for flight dates uh, later that uh, uh, the next week. So uh, they didn't have to worry too much about uh, finding time ahead of time. Um, one of the tricks here is that there's a, usually a number of different names that are associated on these contracts. You have obviously the advertiser. In this case, it's uh, Spence for governor. Um, that's who is actually uh, who the advertisement is for, uh, which is different than uh, what's known as the agency or sometimes the media buyer. A lot of times what happens is an advertiser goes, you know, I don't know how to, how to place ads on all these TV stations. And so they hire a media buyer and the media buyer will often, uh, will, will take care of placing the ads, handles all that administrative work. And then of course, charges them a 15% fee, which you see here. Oops, sorry. Uh, well, it'll come up in a second. Uh, as the agency commission, you'll see 15% there right in the middle. Sometimes, uh, these forms will give you a demographic. Um, almost always you're gonna see adult 35 plus. Uh, it's not particularly meaningful, but it's useful to note uh, if they uh, are more specific, it might give you an indication of who they're after. And then if we go down to the bottom of, uh, of that page, we'll see that uh, the total order numbers. Um, so it's scrolling past for you. I'm sorry, it's slow online. Everybody must be trying to stream the Bill O'Reilly, John Stewart debate. <laughs> okay, so here what you see are the uh, total advertising figures. So in September, uh, for this buy, this ad buy, they bought 64 spots in September and 15 spots in October for a total of 79 spots. And you see the net amount, gross amount there. The gross amount is the amount that the advertiser spends for governor is spending, right? They're spending $13,800. Of that, 11,730 goes to the TV station and the balance goes to that media buyer, that 15% commission. All right, so you can see that there. Then below is some information that's really quite uh, interesting and useful. Goodness, this is slow. Okay, so there's the uh, net and gross amount. So below are each of the ad buys, all right? And what they're saying here is uh, how many ads they are buying, uh, how many spots they're buying. So uh, this first line shows uh, that on September 28th, uh, during the, the late news, the 10 to 10.30 news, they are buying one 30 second spot for $415, all right? Uh, in, and you can also see if you, well, um, we'll go through and look at the individual things here. So this spot purchase uh, starts and ends on September 28th. The show, as I mentioned, is the late news, 10 to 1035. All right, and they bought this spot for Friday. All right, those dashes indicate the days of the week, Sunday through Saturday. And the one means they bought one spot and that dash corresponds to Friday. Length, it's a 30 second spot. They bought one of them. And the cost was $415. And this can be useful if you think about um, who ads might be trying to reach. If they're advertising during uh, football versus if they're advertising during uh, 60 Minutes or the Golden Girls, uh, you've got uh, some different 
uh, target audiences they're trying to get to. Uh, or if they're advertising for um, uh, Anderson Cooper uh, between 11 and 12, one 30 second spot there costs a whopping $15. Clearly he's not doing so well in the ratings. Poor Anderson. Okay, so let's jump back to political ad sleuth. Okay, so uh, we already talked a little bit about the seven day uh, market report. So let's go through here just quickly and look at some of these other reports that we have here. Uh, under states, it's very similar to the seven day market report, um, except this isn't just the last seven days, it's all of uh, the states. And so you can see which states are being the most um, uh, aggressively advertised. Uh, I have family in Ohio and I can, uh, uh, they would be happy to, to say that they can't turn on the television without being inundated with political ads. Um, and, uh, and in fact, you can see that here. Now, it's important to note uh, what is and is not being shown here. First of all, um, there are filings other than ad buys. There are requests for time. There are revisions to ad buys. So just because it says for Florida, there are 3,939 ad filings, it doesn't mean there have been 3,939 purchases. Um, so you, you'll wanna go into to more depth there. We can explain that in a little more detail. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, there can be a lag between a, a purchase order and a report showing up here. For example, if a station sold an ad on, let's say last Thursday, um, well, maybe they didn't get to it Friday because they were uh, knocking off early for the long weekend, and then it was a long weekend, and here it's Tuesday, and they're kind of getting their, you know, their uh, sea legs back, and they finally post it tomorrow. So that's almost a whole week before they've uh, posted an advertising uh, buy. So there is a, a bit of a lag. Under TV markets, this is very similar to the seven day market report, except um, hopefully uh, this is clear. It's not limited to the last seven days. And then we have under newest ads, uh, what are the newest purchases made in just the last three days? And again, I should say posted in the last three days. Um, this is really helpful because on the FCC's website, which is at stations.fcc.gov, it will tell you some of the most recent filings, but it doesn't um, make it easy to look across uh, look across stations and that sort of thing. And here it's very easy to do that. So we can see, for example, that uh, um, a number of ads in uh, Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, um, as well as a couple in Philly and Phoenix. Well, what if we wanna look at all the filings at KPNX? We can simply click that, and here are all the ad filings from KPNX. Now, because of the uh, delay on the screen here, I'm going to, um, I'm not gonna demonstrate this, but if you were to go to stations.fcc.gov and look up KPNX, you would see all these filings, but they would all be in separate folders, separate directories, and it's uh, a real challenge to get them all. And here we've made them available in one easy to see list. So it's it's not necessarily different than what the FCC has, but it's a lot easier. Uh, and I should note, you can also download uh, the data you see here as a CSV file. I'm gonna show two more things real quick and then I'll hand it over to my colleagues. Um, so again, one of the things that you can't do on the FCC site currently is you can't look for all the listings of an advertiser. So let's say you wanna look at all the Crossroads GPS um, ads, there's or, or purchases, I should say. There's no way to do that in the FCC site, but here you can. So we'll go to the search box and we'll type in Crossroads and hit search, of course. <clears throat> so uh, what we'll see here are all the results for Crossroads. Okay, so you see here uh, all the search results for Crossroads. And on the right, we have a table showing exactly that. On the left, we have sort of a, 
kind of Amazon.com filtering section. So let's say we want to look at uh, all the Crossroads ads in Ohio. Well, we can click on Ohio under state and we can narrow these down further. Okay. And so now we see um, all the Crossroads ad buys in Ohio. More than a few, 195. <clears throat> and then you'll note on the right here, needs entry. And this is where the real crowdsourcing part of this project kicks into, into high gear. So if we click on that entry, we can see, so you'll see here once the screen updates, um, that we have the information we've been able to pick up from this ad. I've uh, got this off the FCC. It's a non-candidate issue ad. Um, here's where the file came from. It's for WKRC TV channel 12 and, uh, uh, Cincinnati, I believe. And if we scroll down, because this document is hosted on document cloud, we can actually see the uh, file itself, right? It looks a lot like the one I showed you earlier. And so what we ask here is for people to help fill in some of this data. In order to do that, you have to log in. So if we, if we go to uh, enter ad data, it's going to ask us to log in. It's easiest to sign in with Twitter or Facebook. You can also go to the sign up here at the top and sign up with an email address. Uh, you do have to put in a, a real email address because we send you a link for um, uh, verification. Don't worry, we're not selling it or anything. Uh, but if you just sign in through Twitter or Facebook, that works too. And we are not posting anything to Twitter or Facebook when you sign in that way. So if you're nervous about that, uh, don't be. Yeah, we're it's, not. It's just a way to sign in so that you don't have to remember 8,000, another umpteenth password. When you do sign in, um, you're asked to uh, put in a, a, a profile so that we can uh, keep track, help you uh, find files that are relevant to you. So if you're in uh, Virginia, uh, we'll sort of funnel Virginia files your way versus others. Okay, I need to go back to Crossroads. I selected uh, the advertiser. You just can start typing in who it is and it will autocomplete for you. Uh, growth total in this case, uh, we can look here and we can see that the gross amount at the very end here, once we get to this bottom of this long invoice is $40,150. Number of spots is 53. And when did the start date? Uh, the contract start date is, one moment. Go back up to that flight time here. So you can see this is a task that requires some patience. Uh, I am recommending to all volunteers that you do this while you're waiting for your laundry to dry while drinking a bottle of red wine. <laughs> But any way you get it done, uh, you will be doing a great public service. So we can see here the flight dates are um, August 30th to September, I'm sorry, July 30th to August 6th. And uh, the broadcaster we already have, so we can submit this. All right, and so now we've uh, uh, made this information a little more useful. And if people are able to do this relatively simple task, uh, then this data becomes uh, all the more valuable. If you uh, have the stomach for even more, you can add the individual ad spots purchased, um, such as the Anderson Cooper for $15 and the News for $400. Um, I, I will take a moment to say that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, with ProPublica's Free the Files. This is not designed to compete with uh, Free the Files, rather to complement it. Um, we've talked with them and are working together to be able to share data so that the data uploaded on their site can be shared with ours and vice versa. Um, but what we're doing that's a little bit different than them is uploading those files from stations not covered by the order, um, aggregating uh, a deeper level of information about these files, uh, making it possible to search across um, all the FCC's uh, uh, silos, the way that they're set up. Um, so we think this is a, a, a terrifically useful tool it's only at the beginning, um, but it's also very complementary to what ProPublica uh, is doing. Um, 
And the last thing I'll, I'll mention here, it's, I'm not gonna walk through it, it's fairly obvious. If you have a political file uh, from a station uh, that you visited, you simply click the upload button and uh, you're able to post that. Um, it's, it's a one-click thing, so there's not really anything to show there. But with that, I'm gonna pass it over to uh, Kathy and um, thanks very much for your time and attention. Okay, um, thanks very much. Uh, Josh has been uh, the prime mover behind this project. It's, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, as you can see a little bit, we're, um, we're trying to uh, ask people to do, to help us take what the FCC has already uploaded and made public um, and also um, to uh, add to that database. I think one thing I will say by way of political background here, um, we're very pleased that the FCC was able to uh, do what they could do. Um, we started this project, we and the Free Press and some other partners uh, way back uh, in the spring or maybe even before. At that time, uh, the legal battle over whether or not these files would be released was still ongoing. We had no idea until really late July that uh, the files were in fact going to be released. The broadcasters uh, have objected to this. They are continuing their legal battle. Uh, it, we know we'll have these files for this election, but we don't know if we'll have them for subsequent elections. So I think to the extent that we can show the utility of having these public files and show the public interest that, that making them uh, online uh, serves, we will be bolstering the case for adding to this program. The FCC is trying to make all public, uh, all television stations put their files online by 2014. But again, this is a continuing legal battle, so uh, we don't know that that's going to be the case, which makes all the more reason, uh, the, adds the imp to the importance of what we're trying to do here. Uh, because these files are public, they are in the public domain, it's just a question of how accessible to the public they're going to be. Most voters don't have time to take off work and visit a TV station uh, if they can find it between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. on a weekday to get these files. So that's why we think putting them online is important and that's why we think uh, uh, we can do valuable work. Now, I'm a journalist, so I'm gonna show you how we've used these uh, for stories and how they can be used for stories. Um, Here's a piece that I wrote um, on October 1st. Uh, I, if you can see it on our site, it's going to come up. If you can't see it, it'll come up shortly. Uh, it's on the Sunlight Reporting Group's site. And what this was, as I'm sure those of you who have worked in newsrooms are very familiar with, uh, we're taking advantage of a news hook. Uh, this was the day of um, uh, that a number of the presidential candidates, I, I think both President Obama and uh, Mitt Romney, were in Nevada which, uh, as you have seen already, is one of the hot uh, markets. So we were writing about Nevada. Why is this state uh, so important? And, uh, and as part of the process of writing about this, uh, I looked at political ad sleuth. And so as you can see, um, this state is 35th in terms of population, but it is number seven on our, um, on our hit parade of lists that have drawn the most outside money. Uh, that's from our political ad, or, I'm sorry, from our Follow the Unlimited Money website, which those of you who aren't familiar with it, this tracks the independent expenditures, super PACs, the nonprofit. So it's getting a lot of money, but what our ad sleuth tracker shows us, as you've already seen, is that, um, that Las Vegas, is the number one market in terms of ad activity. Uh, and I've explained to you, and Josh has explained to you the caveats there. We, uh, we can't say that's 142 buys by non-candidate committees, but it is uh, 142 uh, filings at these stations. And remember, this is just as of between August 2nd and now. So you're looking at a lot of advertising. Pity those poor people. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, when I wrote my story, I'm not going to go back because the load times might be uh, long and annoying for some of you, but when I wrote my story on October 1st, uh, there had been um, 100 and, or I'm sorry, 912 buys. Now in Las Vegas, I think we're looking at uh, 1,300. So just in that short period of time, 
uh, you're seeing big changes in the market. So you can see a lot of heat. Uh, and then you can go on to, by clicking on the name Las Vegas, the market, you can actually see uh, the documents, the orders. Um, now, uh, what does this tell us when we go back and we look at these big markets and we see um, what are the stations that are covered? Now, here's one task I would like the volunteers to take on. Uh, when I click to see those stations, these are all the stations in the Las Vegas TV market. And you will see under this column mandated where it says yes, that means that's one of those stations that's covered by the FCC order. It has to be a station that's in the top 50 markets, but it also has to be affiliated with one of the four major broadcasters, ABC, CBS, Fox, or NBC. So you can see there are a lot of stations that aren't covered by the order, which might be very interesting. I'm thinking that the Univision station probably is getting a lot of ad dollars, and it would be really interesting to see who's buying at that station and how much. So that would be one of the stations where we would be asking volunteers to go and say, if you're in a market, even if you're in a market that's covered by the FCC order, look on this site, do what I just did, and find a station that hasn't been covered by the FCC order where you can actually go and get files that aren't entered in our database and help us flesh out this picture of where the money in politics is going. Um, the other thing that is incredibly useful on this site, you can see um, where the, uh, if you, if going back to my story, uh, um, looking over it, you can see that um, there's a lot of spending that goes on. One reason that Las Vegas is a top market is there are, there's more than one race in play there. There's the presidential race. It's a battleground state there. It has a very uh, major, very hotly contested Senate race, one of the most competitive in the country. And as a result of that, uh, Dean Heller, who's the Republican candidate in that race, uh, vacated a seat. And there's also a new congressional seat in Nevada, thanks to redistricting. So we're seeing a lot of spending there. Um, and what these files will do is help you target who is spending that money. Um, I want to go back to our uh, site here, our, our list of the top markets, to show you that uh, one of the things that I think is very revealing about this is that not the presidential race is what we all focus on, but not everything in the, not all of this spending is going to the presidential race. So let's take a look at Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and you would think, well, you know, they've got a pretty uh, competitive Senate race going on there and it's a presidential race. But where, what do we see the ads all about? Detroit International Bridge, Detroit International Bridge, Detroit International Bridge, protect working family. Um, and how do we know? It turns out that there is a local referendum, uh, which we happen to have written about. Uh, one of my colleagues who's here with us has written about on uh, building a bridge between another bridge between Michigan and Canada. And it has become uh, the subject of a heated battle with a lot of um, committees involved in that. Uh, and some of these committees are committees with names like Citizens for a Working America. Um, what does that tell us? I mean, we have no idea who Citizens for Working America is. Are they on the left? Are they on the right? Are they Republican? Are they Democrat? And this, to me, is one of the most exciting aspects of this database. It enables us to find out who's behind these groups. I've had a couple of questions uh, come in through the chat about uh, the non the nonprofits, the so-called nonprofits, or the um, outside committees. And what these are, these are committees that are playing very heavily in the political election this year, thanks to Citizens United. The court decisions, that decision and subsequent rulings that enabled people to put in uh, unlimited amounts of money into the campaign have, uh, have given these, they really let people open committees uh, and from those committees uh, start dumping lots and lots of money into a race without registering if you're a nonprofit with the Federal Election Commission. So here's an example. Uh, this week, I think yesterday, USA Today 
uh, published a story, an interesting story, about boutique PACs, which are these uh, super PACs and nonprofits that are jumping into house races where not very much money makes a big difference. And uh, they mention, they highlight one of these PACs, Now or Never PAC, which is campaigning against Tammy Duckworth. They've dumped about $1.7 million into that race. That has leveled the playing field. It's brought uh, the incumbent Scott or Joe Walsh up to uh, uh, the same. It's brought uh, him his spending up to the same level or spending on his behalf up, up to what Duckworth has spent on her own behalf. So th this is a pretty significant buy. And uh, the writer notes, Susan Davis, uh, Now or Never PAC is a group whose founders do not have to be disclosed and remain unknown. Well, not really. There is one place where these unknown, these what I call mystery meat committees, have to uh, make a disclosure, and that is at the TV stations where they make their buys. So having seen this, I went on and I uh, looked on Political Ad Sleuth uh, for uh, one of these buys, and uh, lo and behold, I found one. And uh, like Julia Child, I have pre-cooked this, so I'm going to show you uh, the document that I downloaded. And you will see here that we have the name of the treasurer of Now or Never and the executive director. And if you do a little sleuthing on that, which I did, you'll find out who these folks are. One of them is the chief of staff for a uh, former chief of staff for a uh, very conservative Republican congressman. The other used to work for Rick Perry. So this is the kind of reporting that uh, this website enables us to do. Uh, in a year when we have more and more committees who are not registering with the Federal Election Commission, uh, this gives us a little bit of a paper trail and the, all the information that a good political reporter needs to begin uh, tracing back uh, the origins of the money. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Amy, uh, who can talk to you a little bit more about how to use this site and how to help us uh, build it up. Sure. Um, so as, as Kathy was saying, um, you know, we political Sleuth is really a, a great resource in terms of finding the information. Um, and but you know, it's great that a lot of the information that's available on there comes currently from the FCC. But we want more information than that, and that's why you know we are working with the Free Press, um, who has been um, so great in terms of helping recruit um, volunteers and helping them teach them in terms of you know what are the files, what are political files, and what, uh, where are they in at the broadcast stations, and what are you looking for when you actually get out to the stations, because I think, you know, a lot of times there's public information and there's like the actual public information that you can, you can go out um, and find. So on the bottom of the uh, political ad suit page is a take action. So if you're interested in helping actually unlocking these, um, the, the data from the files, feel free to sign up and uh, I know um, Candace, who I think is on the call right now, we'd be more than happy to, to reach out and get you started. And then additionally, as you are going through the data, um, and you saw when um, Kathy and uh, Josh was looking through the site, that it's very, very easy if you're in, in a file to just um, start entering the information. Um, so, and there's also the different tabs on top, um, the login will get you into um, the, um, the ability to start uploading the different files. And as Josh <coughs> mentioned, you can sign up through Twitter or Facebook, uh, as well as just logging in on your own. Um, and another thing I want to mention um, as well, as, as Josh, uh, I think, alluded to, is that there are some files here. Um, so for instance, if I'm searching for Romney, you will see that there is a status on the right hand side. So there are some files here that you know say needs entry. We need your help. <laughs> and then there are files that says not loaded. So the files that says need entries are the files that you know um, are already in document cloud. So if you click on this file, for instance, so take a second to load. The files are already embedded into um, the page that you're seeing to make it easier for you to upload that information. 
Um, and that is not, not the case for all of them because the FCC is getting a lot of these files from the broadcast stations and it takes a while for that information to be uploaded. And then additionally, if you are uploading a file, uh, when you do that, the status for those files would, you know, would say uh, also needs entry because it's in, in the document itself. Um, and then if, for instance, you can see the source here, it says FCC, it would say user submitted. So um, as, as Kathy mentioned, we, from the FCC information, we have the stations um, from the top markets um, and the top four stations, but there are so many more that we need. Um, so it would be, you know, if you are living in a swing state, for instance, and you are you have access and you're close to a TV station in Ohio, a lot of these swing states are not the um, the covered markets. That would be incredibly helpful um, to to have you get those files and unlock that information. So I think you know we uh, are running kind of along in this uh, presentation, but we wanted to definitely take questions from people. So if you have any questions, I know there are some that's been submitted online, but if you want, you can unmute your phone at star seven and feel free to ask us um, any questions that you have. Yeah, and I'd also like to say um, two things. Uh, one, we have with us uh, my colleague Anu, who has actually done uh, a lot of, she's one of our power users. So if any of you want to dig deeper beyond the front facing website, and learn how to use the CSV, learn what you can do really with the CSV download. Uh, she's available here to talk. Um, and the other thing I'd like to say, um, because our uh, friends and colleagues at the Free Press have made this point, um, if you are uploading files, and Candace can jump in and um, add to this, but if you are uploading files, uh, you know, this is a very new pro uh, process. It's new for us, it's new for the uh, FCC, and it's new for the television broadcasters. And so you may find some documents in those files that really aren't appropriate to be put up on a public website. Uh, we are trying to make uh, the files we get public uh, as quickly as possible in the interest of informing voters uh, before the election. But we are asking folks who are helping us to use your discretion and to not put up online things that shouldn't be put online, like checks and uh, credit card numbers. So with that, uh, I think we're ready to take questions. But one of the things we talked about uh, were the forms that um, we, t we uh, used to find, uh, I showed you the website where we have um, information about the uh, who's behind a package. So here's some of the files. We're looking for a file um, that up here you'll see it's called NAB form uh, PB17. And uh, sadly, uh, and this is one of the things that we're discovering as we, uh, as we do this data search, um, there really is no uh, place that, uh, because what we're pulling off this, the, to the extent that this site is searchable, it's because um, our technical wizards have taken metadata from the FCC files, and so that's the kind of thing you're seeing here. And uh, because it includes the names of committees, we're able to allow you to search for a presidential candidate or a candidate name or a committee name. Um, but one, one thing we have found, and I can't guarantee that it's going to come up with everything, a lot of the documents like the ones I showed you that identify the principles behind a committee are listed as an NAB document, NAB standing for National Association of Broadcasters. So if you type that into the search box, uh, you will come up with a bunch of these documents. Uh, and as you can see, they, are, uh, they list a number of committees. Now, we obviously know who's providing the money for Mitt Romney, but I think what you're going to find as we get into the uh, ever uh, surprising month of October, especially those of you who are monitoring local races, house races, uh, that's where we've seen in the past a lot of these uh, dead end disclosure kind of committees where you have a super PAC that has one contributor and that happens to be a nonprofit 501c4 that doesn't have to disclose donors. So I think those are the kind of names, you know, Americans for better apple pie. Uh, that you want to look at and uh, find this form. And uh, they're not all going to be listed under this form because this is chaotic, but this is one way we have found so far 
to uh, root out these uh, th these forms, and they're very useful. Uh, they contain very useful information for reporters because uh, the committees are required to list the name of at least one principal, and that gives you uh, just one little string, which is all go we good reporters need to trying to figure out who's behind that money. Um, and we just want to thank everyone for for joining us uh, for the webinar. And you know we are. This is essentially our soft launch for the um, political ass sleuth um, project. But this really would not be um, as useful without your help. You know, we what we try to do with this project is really get the information that is currently available from from the FCC, but they're still just PDFs. So we really encourage everyone to to check out the site, play with it, and also um, if you have time to help us. Uh, uh, put uh, data entry, some of the information that's in there, and feel free to contact uh, any of us um, at, at Kathy Kiley's at kkiley at sunlightfoundation.com. I'm A Nai, A N G A I at Sunlight Foundation, and Josh is at J Hatch at sunlightfoundation.com. Or if you just sent an email out to outreach at politicaladsalute.com, you will get in touch with all of us. So. We just want to th say thank you again for, for joining um, and happy sleuthing. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you all.